Georgia beat Tennessee yesterday. Georgia 41, Tennessee 17. I was just talking about Dave Aranda and Baylor. I want you to take a long listen, if you have time, to Dave Aranda. And I want you to listen specifically to what he said about making it not matter. It meaning any external factor. And then I want you to watch the Georgia Bulldogs play. Because Georgia is the personification of what Dave Aranda is talking about. And to explain to you what I mean, this week alone, you had guys having off-field issues, and it didn't matter for Georgia on Saturday. You had guys out with the flu, it didn't matter for Georgia on Saturday. You had a season-ending injury, and it didn't matter for Georgia on Saturday. For that matter, they're in the game on Saturday, down on the road early, and none of it mattered. None of it mattered because the great teams don't make it matter. The great teams just play to a standard every week. The whole nameless, faceless opponent thing. You think it's boring. You think it's coach speak. I'm telling you it's the formula to win a championship. Georgia didn't make any of it matter yesterday. They just went and took care of business. There are some facets they're probably not 100% happy with. I'm telling you inside linebacker is probably not one of those facets. But there are some aspects that they can improve on. Any kind of perfectionist is going to find ways to improve. But Georgia ended up taking a game in a spot that a lot of people had circled around here and had said, ooh, I don't know, no one's run tempo, no one's thrown the ball a lot on them. And Tennessee had some success yesterday, but Georgia still won the game 41-17 to in Neyland. That's the takeaway. All of it, all the externals, all the stuff that could knock a lesser team off the rails didn't impact Georgia in any kind of negative way. And by the way, uh, just a few things that stood out to me. I was talking about that inside linebacker core. Kirby Smart could coach at Georgia another 20 years. He may not have an inside linebacker core better than he has right now. N'Kobe Dean and Channing Tendall and Quay Walker, when I look at those guys, the first thing you see is outstanding linebacker play. But also what I think about is the dogfight they had, pun intended, I guess, to land those guys in recruiting. Like I remember N'Kobe Dean Looked like he was going to Bama. He's at Georgia. Quay Walker, I think, may have been committed to Bama at one point. He's at Georgia. Like, these, a lot of these guys, you can extend beyond the linebacker core, a lot of these guys, by nature of how good they are, they had high-profile recruitments. You just think about how much of an emphasis they put on recruiting, and then you can go up and down the roster, and you can remember the stories vividly of each of these kids that they ended up landing. It's the key to success. It's the name of the game. You don't have to make it any more or less fancy than that. I feel like everyone's in a holding pattern now because the other big takeaway I had, I was, I was reading slash listening to a lot of what Rusty Manziel over at Dogs 24-7 has said about Stetson Bennett. And the key kind of point that I think a lot of people, Rusty included, had after this game is, hey, it's Stetson Bennett's team. We've talked about it some on this show. He's talking about it. Everyone around Georgia is talking about it. It is Stetson Bennett's team right now, quarterback for Georgia. So what I feel from pretty much everyone now is everyone's in a holding pattern on Georgia football. And it stems from this quarterback situation because no one's changing their mind now. It's kind of like when you're deep into an election season, one week to go. No one's really changing their mind. Everyone's ready to go vote. It's the same way with Georgia at quarterback. You either do or don't think that Stetson Bennett is equipped to win a national championship at Georgia, which, to be very clear, is the way they will define success or failure this year. And playing against Tennessee, no disrespect, it's not going to change your mind. Playing against Georgia Tech is not going to change your mind. The first opportunity that Georgia is going to have to really change anyone's mind in a discernible way is December 4th in Atlanta against probably Alabama in the SEC championship game. The thing that we were watching a lot this weekend was, is Tennessee going to expose anything, even if they lose, that really indicates there's another team down the road that can capitalize on this particular thing that Tennessee exposed. And then there were some things here and there, but I don't really think there was one glaring issue. And that may mean it's still there and Tennessee didn't find it, or it may mean there's no glaring issue really there. I think the latter would be a lot more fortuitous for Georgia. But I went to Director Collin, who is both my source on the AP poll and Tennessee football, and I said, Colin, I could talk about Tennessee tonight, but I really want to know what you feel. And Director Collins' quote was, I can't wait till next season. Director Collins liked some things that Tennessee was able to do yesterday. It is cause for celebration around the SEC. If you score 17 on Georgia, that's not even a joke. That's just real life in 2021 around here. And um, so Tennessee's had some situations this year where they've played against Ole Miss or the second half against Alabama or some of the first half against Georgia where you look and you say, I like that. I like that. I like that. Now, I need to add this, this, and this, 
and we'll be a pretty formidable product next year. Went and beat Kentucky. That's a big deal. But Tennessee, I mean, it's on the right track. I don't think anybody's doubting the hire of Josh Heupel right now. In fact, I was doing some radio last week in Knoxville. Question kind of came out of left field. I don't have any reason to believe this is going to happen. I'm just saying the bigger point that I would be focusing on right now is, is Josh Heupel doing such a good job at Tennessee that other people want him? Again, that's not to start a rumor. I haven't heard anything like that. It was just a random question that was thrown out. So suffice it to say, it's been a good first year, all things considered, in Tennessee. Like, think of, think of what they were going through when they hired Josh Heupel. Uh, things could be a whole lot worse, trust me.